Hey everybody, it's Tom Darling here and uh, Tom Darling's Woodshop. And what we're going to do today, or tonight, is I'm going to make a couple barn doors. And we're going to do it out of some 1x6 pine, as well as some tongue and groove pine. And it's really not that hard of a process. Stick around and watch what we've got coming. And we'll try to give you all the angles and information to show you what we need to do. want to do is we want to take our one by sixes and we want to make sure we get the right length here for what the door is going to be. Most doors are right at six foot eight inches which is right at 80 inches high. Um, the first barn door we're going to make is going to be 36 inches wide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut three pieces 36 inches wide out of this this one by six and then these two pieces here and we'll take into account the five and a half inches on the top and the bottom on this and then what we'll do is we'll adjust the height so that we'll have a runner across the bottom a runner across the top and one through the middle here uh, for our outside frame and that's where we'll start the first thing we'll do is we'll get our measurements and then we'll go over to the saw and we'll make some cuts you always want to make sure we have proper eye protection and proper protective gear on so that you don't have any problem at all when you're measuring and cutting on the saw So now that we've got these pieces cut, our three footers cut here, Let's move this back a little bit so we can see. So now that we've got our three footers cut for across, across the center, across the top, across the bottom, what we need to do is we need to make sure we cut our long stringers uh, the length based on the difference between the top and the bottom going across. So this is exactly just under five and a half. So two of those together makes five and a half, five and a half is 11. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure our length here across and we're going to come down to 80 inches, 80 inches minus 11. So 80 inches minus 10 is 70, minus one other is 69. So 69 inches puts us exactly at 80 inches once we have our top and our bottom long. So 69 is where we're going to measure. We're going to do each one of these is 69. We'll mark those, we'll take them over to the saw, and we'll cut them. Now that we've got both of these cut at 69 inches, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're going to find the best edge to lay them down on. We're going to lay them out on the table. And once we get them laid out on the table, then what we're going to do is we're going to start with one side and we're going to basically lay our horizontal across and locate where it's going to go just to do a little dry fit. Now hopefully your table is wide enough to be able to accommodate this. As you can see what we're going to do is we're going to lay it down. Because what's going to happen is these are going to butt up against each other. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pocket hole screw. Yeah, the corners, the four corners of these together, nice and flush, so we nice get a really nice flush edge right here on where these go together here. Because these are not going to be weight bearing outside with two and a half inches thick uh, like you would have or, or an inch and a half solid material, we're going to have um, hung a group behind this in a double ply situation here. Um, we're, we're not going to need the cross brace for the interior door that we would normally have. Besides, that's a style that difference that I have in my house, a southwestern style house. Uh, don't want it to look like a barn door necessarily. Want it to look like a southwestern rustic tongue and groove door. So what we're going to do is we're going to pocket hole these from the back into the bottom and, and the top stringer and the center stringer. And then once we have the frame together, then we can flip it over. We can lay our tongue and groove boards into place and then we'll start looking like a door. Take the pocket hole jig here and because we are at uh, three quarters of an inch thick on the edge of these boards we want to make sure that we have our guide here set for three quarters of an inch which it is and then what we'll do is we'll get our bit set for three quarters of an inch 
so that we can drill into these boards in order to attach them to the side boards. Now this is the Craig pocket jig, pocket hole joinery system and it's probably one of the best tools that you will ever buy as far as being able to make flat stock joints if you're not doing a lap joint, not doing a dado or a rabbit joint. So what we do, we'll mark our board here. This is, let's go make sure we have the right side, the back side. I'm just going to make a mark here showing me where the edge of my boards are. So that I know where to drill, to drill my holes. I'm going to lay them over here. I'm going to put three holes in it. I'm going to pop this up here to give me something flat to rest on. Make sure that I'm clear of my line down here. Just hard to see from where you are. Crank it down. And I'm going to put my hole in this. And I'm going to put another hole in this one. And then we're going to scoot it over and get the last hole for the third hole towards the end here. Clap it down. And there we go. And then what you get is you get three pocket holes. These three pocket holes will be what lines up. I'm going to return this over here as you can see right here. And what we'll do is pocket screws will go in to attach. Pocket screws will go in to attach to the board here. So we'll do it for the other side and we'll do it for the other three as well. Now that we've got these cut and we've got them where we want them, we've got the holes in them, we need to flip these over because these are the good size that we want to have up. So what we're going to do, I'm going to bring this over to this side so it's upside down exactly as I had it on the table. Bring it over here and then I'll put this piece up at the top where we're going to use it. We'll bring it around, and it'll be up here at the top. Now what we want to make sure we do before we go ahead and put these together is we are going to glue them and screw them and what we're going to make sure we want this exactly flat at the edge of the table. So we're going to use an inch and a quarter coarse threads of these pocket screws. As you can see here, this pocket screw has a square head on the top. You guys have all seen this before if you've done this. Uh, I talked about Craig Jig, and it's a coarse thread which will go into the soft pine wood very, very easily. And there you go. We're going to go do the other side now.
now we've got the frame together. It's good and sturdy. And if you turn it over, you can take a look at the face of it. And now we have a frame. And we'll pull the glue off of there as soon as it dries. And now we've got a flat frame we can work with. Now what we want to do now is we want to take our horizontal piece that goes in the middle and we want to locate where we're going to put it. So in order to do that, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either put it directly in the middle of the door, halfway down from the top to the bottom. We have our 80 inches and if we want to do that we would just center it right at 40 and then we would measure the width dimension here and we'd cut it. The other thing you can do is you can offset it so the top half is a little shorter than the bottom half which is another style or you can have more than one so for the for, for our door we're going to go ahead and put it right in the middle so 40 is going to be where it's going to be located and we'll mark that in a moment but what we need to do you figure out exactly how wide it needs to be and according to this we're at 25 inches that we need to cut it to so we're going to cut that right now 25 inches Five inches. So now we're going to locate the center line for where we want it to be. 40 inches is going to be our center. So we'll go ahead and mark 40 inches here. We'll go to the other side. We'll mark 40 inches there. And then what we'll do on the board is we'll mark the center point on the horizontal board as well. Five and a half is where we are. So half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So we'll mark two and three quarters. If you want to know how I did that fast, half of five is two and a half, and then half of a half is a quarter, so two and a half plus a quarter is two and three quarters. So two and three quarters will work it on this side. Once we know exactly where we're going to be located, then we know exactly where we want to set it, and now we're going to put pocket holes in it, screw it together, and away we go. Put a little glue on here, on each end. To a center portion. We're marked exactly where we need to be. We'll clean off all the debris off the table. I want to make sure we get a nice flat lay. Set it in place. And then we'll get our pocket screws and we'll go ahead and start putting it in. I'm going to start in the center so I get a nice center latch. Do the same on the other side because I want to make sure that any bow that we have in this wood. Uh, some of the wood that I'm using um, on some cutoffs from some coal uh, lumber which you find from time to time. Uh, is that sometimes it comes out of a piece that uh, might be from a larger piece that either was cut or warped. Uh, lots of really good wood out there. You know, three feet of piece of a crappy board is real easy to turn into something great. We'll put our last two screws in over here. Now if we can keep from knocking this thing over so you can watch what I'm doing, that would be awesome. So now we've got our frame all put together. And as you can see here, let's see if I can zoom out here. As you can see here, we've got a frame all in place. we got all sides put together. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to sand it, we're going to have to clean it off. Um, but right now this is the outside frame that we want to have together for the first part of the door. What we'll do now is we'll lay it upside down because what's going to happen now is we're going to put tongue groove um, dimensional lumber on the back side of this squared up to each side all the way across to make the second level of the sandwich if you will of the door. We're going to take this tongue and groove this tongue and groove dimensional lumber and what we're going to do is we're going to lay it and we're going to apply it to the back of the door. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure across. The other thing I want to make sure we point out here 
is I am going to leave a gap down at the bottom of the door here. We want to make sure we leave a gap um, from the bottom that's at least a half an inch or so for the bottom floor mounted track that's going to keep this door from moving back and forth. So we will leave a gap across the bottom of the door and then we'll measure the length to cut these boards and then we're going to start attaching them side to side to the back of this door here, uh, the back of this door frame so that we can make our door. I want to do now is a tongue of groove on each side. One has a, one side has a gap on it, the other side has a tongue on it. Now on the side that has the gap that's going to start with the edge of my door, I need to cut that gap or that whole piece out so I have a flat, solid edge that we will have to start with working my way over. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this blade down to exactly just, just above three quarters of an inch, which is the thickness of my tongue and groove. And then I'm going to cut off about it's about a half an inch of that side, so the groove goes away, and then I have a nice flat edge to work. Now we have our door frame back on the table. Now that we've cut our edge, we're going to start our first tongue and groove. As we take our tongue and groove piece that we've just run through the table saw and taken off that groove on this side, and we lay it flat, flush, up against the side and the edge of our door. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to apply glue on this piece, and then we're going to screw it down. And the reason why I want to use a couple screws on this is because I want to make sure we get a nice tight bond and we'll also clamp this first piece as well so we get a nice flush finish all the way down and then we'll start laying the next one and the next one and the next one and the next one in place on our piece. Each one of these pieces is eight feet long. We need to cut it down to 79 and a half. The door is 80, but I'm gonna leave that half inch reveal at the bottom so that we have a place for our door stop guide to go. Um, to hold the door in place when it's on the barn door rail. So we'll cut all these down to 79 and a half, and then we'll go ahead and start attaching them over on the door. On this first board that we're going to put on here is I went ahead and I countersunk a screw screw hole here I went glue down on the frame and I went ahead and laid my first board with the nice edge that we just cut and screwed it down and we'll screw it also down at that end down there and then we'll go ahead and nail it all the way down so that we can get a really good starter board to work all the way across and attaching these boards and we're going to do the same thing down here at this corner here we're going to attach I'm going to pre-drill and countersink. I'm going to make sure we get this perfectly square with our edge. Go ahead and we're going to put a clamp on it so that we keep it in place. We got it nice and square. Then we're going to take our drill and we're going to countersink and pre-drill one hole. And then two holes. We'll get this piece screwed on and then we'll start putting our next sections on. Now that we got our first piece in place right here, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the next next piece, next board that we want to use, and we're going to basically look at the, look at the groove and put the smooth side down. And then what we do is we basically come up next to the one beside it, we line it up exactly where it goes, and then we'll take a mallet or a hammer and we'll put it in place so it attaches nicely to the board next to it. Now because these boards 
obviously are sometimes warped, bent out of shape. It's going to take a little bit of time and effort to make sure you get these things exactly where you want them before we attach them to the face board. And then we'll move right along. screwed in as well so now what we're going to do is we're going to flip the door over and then we get to see how things are going to look and what comes next all right let's get this thing flipped over don't have a good angle here for the camera but as you can see as i flip it over lay it on the table what we have is a door. It looks like a complete door frame now. Now notice there's all this, there's a couple little rough places in here. I got all my knots. I've chose to do the knots on this side, all the stuff that I really liked because I'm going to put a little bit of a you know, rustic finish on it and then when we get it mounted at the top. But as you can see from the front here, it's basically a panel door with tongue and groove in the middle. Much like a lot of the doors that I have in my house. Get it sanded, uh, we'll get it prepped for stain, and then if we turn on the back, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to go ahead and put on our little catch down here at the bottom. And once we get it, once we get it sanded and stained, then it'll be ready to get the hardware mounted inside, and we'll make another one just like it. So that's it. That's the first run. Uh, it's a good looking door. Once it gets stained on it, and we go ahead and get it finished, it's going to look great. And we'll come back and show you what that looks like.